Hi guys, Miss Francis here to finish up our discussion on population genetics. When discussing Darwin, we learned that he coined the phase survival of the fittest. But what does it mean to be fittest? Does it mean I'm the strongest, I'm the fastest, I'm the smartest? Well, in terms of evolution, fittest does not necessarily mean those things. Fittest means I am an organism that is best adapted to my environment. Since I'm best adapted to the environment, that means I'm more likely to survive reproduce and pass on that fitness, those better um, adapted characteristics um, to my offspring, meaning I'm contributing favorable alleles to the gene pool of future generations. Um, so the effect of selection on varying characteristics can be either directional, diversifying, or stabilizing. So directional selection shifts the frequency curve for a phenotypic characteristic in one direction. So if you take a look, here is my original bell curve that represents the distribution of the colors of this particular mouse. However, mice can become darker. I might have a directional selected shift if being darker is now more favorable in that environment. So directional selection will shift that bell curve that represents the frequency of the phenotypes. In this case, the phenotype is the color of the fur of the mouse in one direction. Now, diversifying selection occurs when environmental conditions favor individuals at both extremes. So for example, here is our original bell-shaped curve that represents the distribution of the colors of the mouse. However, if for some reason there's some sort of environmental change, where now it is more favorable for my phenotype to be at the extremes, and in this case the phenotype is color, um, then my bell curve is going to shift such that it represents a larger amount of the population being at the phenotypic extremes, in this case being white or being brown. So what diversifying selection can result in is called balanced polymorphism, where I favor two extreme phenotypes. Now if we look at the beaks of these birds, you can see I've got a large beak and I've also got a small beak. I don't really have any intermediate sized beaks and that's because the type of food that these two beaks can eat are um, going to be favored by a small beak versus a large beak. So diversifying selection usually selects against the intermediate phenotypes. For example, a dandelion. You'll have really tall dandelions because they can outcompete the other dandelions for sun. And you might have really small dandelions because they won't be cut down by the, the lawnmower. But any dandelions that are intermediately sized probably won't exist. Then you've got stabilizing selection, which favors intermediate variants and at, um, basically selects against these extreme phenotypes that were chosen during diversifying selection. And what stabilizing selection does is it maintains the predominant phenotypes. A common example would be human birth weight. If I have a baby that's larger than three to four kilograms or a baby that's smaller than three to four kilograms, there's often Often a higher infant mortality rate associated with babies of that size. Sexual selection may lead to pronounced secondary differences between the sexes. So not only will males and females differ as far as their reproductive organs, but they will also have different secondary sex characteristics, such as differences in size, differences in color, um, enlarged or exaggerated features, and usually males are the gender that have the showier features. So if we take a look at this peacock, the wings are, I'm sorry, the feathers are colorful and the male is trying to show off to entice the female peacock to mate. Um, if you look down here, you see the birds of paradise where the male birds of paradise is actually putting on a dance and showing off his colors to try and mate with that female.
Now, intrasexual selection is direct competition among individuals of one sex, usually the males, for mates of the opposite sex, and it can involve physical battles, but more often it's just a ritualized display, which then will discourage the lesser competi uh, competitors and kind of determines who's the alpha, it determines dominance.